Here we have the red version of the Digital Monster X version 2, and it looks like it's about to undergo surgery. That is because it is. We have our screwdriver, we have our tweezers, we have our glass bowl, and over here we have a soldering iron. So we're about to put all these things to good use to open up this Digimon and mod it. Um, basically what we're looking to do is to put this device into debug mode. Debug mode is a tool used to help the developers make sure that everything's working properly by being able to test things more quickly than they would in normal gameplay. And I use that to make the guides that I make. I use this to be able to quickly determine evolution requirements in a short amount of time. It does not tell me what the requirements are, but it helps me do, it helps me get them faster, basically. We're gonna be opening this up, putting that in there, and we're gonna be doing that with this red device right here. Now, to start off, we're gonna double check our version. If we hold down A and B at the same time, press the reset button, brings us to uh, this red right here, and if we hit a button, if we hit the A button there, we see our version is 4C, there we go, 4C00. So that uh, C means it's the red one, um, A is, black, B is white, and D is red. Now, uh, we haven't tried swapping versions on this yet, but the black and white were able to swap between themselves, but not keep any Digimon from the other version when you swapped. So if you swap devices, it's literally an actual device swap. It's not like the Pendulum 20th, where while you can swap versions, you can keep your save data and therefore keep all of the eggs. No, you can only raise that device's Digimon. Now, this device is missing a specific connection used to swap devices on the black and white. So it may not be possible to version swap anymore. We are not certain. We haven't uh, looked fully into that just yet, but we will uh, know at some point. But the main purpose of this isn't version swapping, but rather getting into debug mode. So we're going to do that right now. Although real quick, let's just show you a neat trick here. So we're on the version screen. If we hit the A button, that will erase all our data and show us the screen test. You actually might be able to stop it from erasing your data after uh, you've started the test, but Either way, I don't, I don't recommend hitting A unless you're... In fact, I don't remember going to... The, I don't recommend going to this screen at all unless you're willing to lose your data. Um, hitting B does nothing, and hitting C brings you to a little sound test where you can try out all the different uh, cool sounds that the device has. So we go to, like, the number six, and... There we go, there's the uh, attack sound. Cool. So, another cool thing is that we did A and B to get to this. If we do B and C, I believe that does nothing, but if we... No. No, B, C does do something. It's A, B, and C that does something. Let's see. Mm, nope, that didn't do anything. So let's try all three and press it. No. Was it A and C? A and C and reset? Yeah, there it is. You hit A and C and reset. It brings you to a Digimon selector. You do not have to be debugged to access this Digimon selector, but a note is unlike black and white, this device only has the erasable data for its own Digimon. Uh, Black and White had every Digimon on this list, whereas Red only contains Digimon that are supposed to be there, which I guess makes sense. Um, I'm not sure why it is. It may be a data saving uh, cost, because this does have more Digimon than the Black and White did. Um, so it could be just a result of that. I don't know, but if you do this, you will lose all your data immediately, and you'll be thrown into a demo mode. Um, in order to go return to regular raising, you'll have to reset the device, and then uh, once you load after you've reset, you'll be able to raise that Digimon like you would any other. So if I really wanted Dark Tyrannomon, I could have chosen him just there. Um, but I'm not going to do that because we're going to we are going to have that feature available to us more readily in debug mode. But I need other stuff as well. So we're going to start by just un um, undoing the battery here. All right, battery is off. Battery is out. Okay, nice and simple. Now, fun fact, the inside of this device right here is green, but the inside of the purple device is blue. I don't know if that was done to make them more or less visible through the translucency, but it's interesting. The English 20s were the same way. Um, some had blue and some had green, depending on the version. So I don't know if uh, they took tips from Bandai of America or what, but that's just uh, what it is. Next, we need to take out these four screws in the corners. You can use the same. I'm using a very small flat head screwdriver to do this. Um, JIS screwdrivers are also good. I found out that's a good option just a few days ago from a friend of mine. Um, Phillips heads I would not recommend because they tend to strip these types of screws. These are technically not Phillips screws, I guess. Um, and a flathead works 
just fine for these. Okay, once our screws are out, it is very important to be cautious of this right here. That is the speaker for the device and it is attached to the back panel. However, our board is currently attached to the front panel and the speaker is connected to the board via a wire. If we yank this apart, we will break that wire and it's important to just very carefully, as if this is on a hinge, just gently lift it up. Now before we go any further, I'm gonna dump my screws into this glass bowl here so we do not lose them. We'll go ahead and take the keychain off now. It's just connected by a little peg I'll show you here in a second. There we go. Okay, that's all four screws. Um, here's the peg I was just referring to. This is where the keychain is attached to the device. Very easy to slip it right back on. And now if we just carefully open this up, we'll see those wires right there connecting the speaker to the device that we want to be careful of. And then what we will also see is four more screws right there, 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 and there that we'll need to take off in order to um, continue this project. Now, I should say real quick, uh, this is not intended as a guide on how to do this. This is just showing you what I do. Um, you should not be attempting to do this on your own if you do not have experience in doing this. Um, what I'm doing here is very dangerous and I do have the risk of breaking my device by doing this. And you will not get your money back. No one will give you a refund because you opened your device and did this. And just quite simply, if you are not confident in doing this sort of thing, you should not attempt to. Um, my techniques also for doing soldering are not professional by any means. I am not good at soldering and you not, should not necessarily follow my example in what I'm about to do. So. Just a heads up there, so we're gonna go ahead and continue that. Also, fun fact, there's a little date printed on this board right here. Um, so it says Digimon X2 Red, there's the model number, there's the PN number, and we got the date, 2019, 626. Um, these devices may have been ready in June, I don't know. <laughs> that's the least when this board was, I don't know if that means it's when this was printed or if that's when it was approved or what, but I don't know. They're known for having things ready well in advance, as we learned with the Pendulum version 20s. All right, so let's take off those four screws. Put all the screws in my glass will always have somewhere to keep your screws. You do not want to lose these. It is not a good time. Okay, that's all four screws. So now, the next step is we're going to put this back piece back on. And what we're gonna do is we're going to be applying a bit of pressure on top here so that we hold this top piece to the back piece. Put our other thumb on the other side and we're gonna kind of push away from the screen. Or actually, no, we're gonna leave the screen there. We want the screen to come with it. So we're going to just, all right, well, the screen didn't come with it. Let's see if we can get it to. There we go, okay. So let's uh, put that down. So now our device is in two halves. We're gonna gently place the buttons back in their buttonholes. There we go, the screen's in its own little hole right here, as you can see. It's always best to make it so the screen falls into this as you pull it apart. That way you don't have to worry about repositioning the screen back in or worrying about where your little cardstock with the background went. So now that leaves us with this. So as you can see on here, there are few points of note, and that's these JP connections right here. Each of these has a different effect. JP1 gives us debug mode, um, but JP3 and JP4 I have not tested on this version just yet. Um, they are likely to be doing the same thing they did on the other um, X versions, black and white, which is that they lock your daily, or all your Xyrolls actually to seven, which is really boring to be 100% honest. And in fact, anything I'm doing right here, I'm not really doing for gameplay purposes but I'm doing to figure out more about the device. So I don't really recommend doing any of this if you want to have fun with your device. This is for people like me who study it, and which I do find studying to be fun, but as a actual game, the benefits of debug kind of make it annoying, I would say. Like, if you have fast forward and the ability to choose any Digimon, it's like, well, what's the point then at that, with that and uh, raising a virtual pet? So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be connecting the JP1 so that I can test out these evolutions, and we're gonna be doing that by applying some solder. Now again, this is not my forte. I'm not a master at soldering, and as such, I'm not gonna worry about you being able to closely see what I'm about to do. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of my solder wire right here, 
We're going to be putting it right over the GP1 connection. And I don't know if my head will get in the frame or not, but if it does, hi, how you doing? Okay, so now we basically got a little ball of solder right there on that JP1 connection. I'll zoom that in so you can see. It's not actually little, it's a pretty big blob, but again, I'm not a pro at this, so. Um, there you go, so now you can see JP1. Those two points are now connected, which means when I put this back together, which when you're doing this, I always, or when I'm doing it, I always make sure that I uh, have done it before I screw it all back together, so I hold the connector pieces and this frame very tightly and I turn them upside down and the connector slides right into the other frame here so we're just going to make sure those line up first push it together and there we go now if it can fit together without the solder uh, giving any give then we're good that means our solder is the right size so we're good there or at least it's not too big not necessarily the right size and we're going to test so we're gonna Throw that battery back in without putting it all the way back together. And in this case, I usually use my mouth to hold the screwdriver. So I'm holding A and B. We'll push reset. Okay. All right, so now we have to apply pressure to the screen because the screws aren't doing it for us to be able to actually see the screen. All right, let's see if I can. All right, so as you can see, red's appearing right there. You can barely see it, sorry. This is not a optimal for viewership to see the screen, but that's not what I'm worried about. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. And sure enough, we have a debug banner on our version screen. So that means we successfully entered debug mode. So we're going to now screw this whole thing back together. Let's get that battery back out. Remove the front panel. And we're actually, no, we're not gonna remove the board too. We're gonna just remove the back. Actually, there we go. All right, and so we're gonna screw these back in. Now, just as a note with the screws, um, the corner pieces are all the frame screws, not the board screws. So don't uh, don't put the tiny screws in there. It's important to make sure these are tight, otherwise the screen will not display its pixels properly. It is very much reliant on that pressure to be able to display. All right, put the back panel back on. Screw this in. And one more there. Oopsie. Okay, so you'll notice I may have forgotten something. And screw these just a bit, not all the way. This is something I forget 100% of the time that I do this, and that is Grab the keychain back on. <laughs> now, some people actually like to take the keychain off altogether. I don't blame them. It seems like it does kind of get in the way, but the specific cases that I use, as recommended by Purple Flirt, there we go, slid that back on. And just again, that's just a little peg. Nothing crazy as far as how that's connected. Um, yeah, the keychain connects it right onto the case that I use, which is it's a nice little feature. They're just headphone, they're, yeah, earbud cases aren't meant for this, but man, do they work well with, uh, with Digimon and Tamagotchis as well. Any small device about this size with a keychain on it, they are beautiful. And there we go, we have a debugged device. Now, what will that do for you? Um, I'm gonna explain that in a separate video as well that I'm gonna record right now, but I figure this video has gone on long enough, so if you just wanted to see how to open up and do it, there you go, that's all it is and um, in the next video I'll explain why I do that in the first place. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this here. If you are interested, please watch that next video. Otherwise, if you got what you needed out of this, well, good. And if you didn't get anything out of this, well, surprise you stuck around this long. I appreciate it. Bye.